Okay, Michael Brown from Solar Ray again, uh, replying to some questions posed to Renewable Nation about solar energy. So this one, it's kind of a two-part question, comes from Dan in Circleville, Ohio. Hi, Dan. Hi, this is Dan, and I've got a two-part question about solar power coming to you from Circleville, Ohio. But firstly, is there a preference from installers or performance difference whether the solar panels are mounted on the roof of the house or mounted in a freestanding rack in the backyard or next to the house? And secondly, is there a means of integrating the power produced by those panels directly into what the house uses, like the main line coming in from your local power provider? Or is it best to store that power in a battery bank and then use it separately, so plugging implements directly into that stored power bank, rather than just being able to flip a switch and know that when those lights comes on, it's being powered by the, the solar power produced by the panels, just as it would be from the main power provided by your local provider. So interested to hear what you have to say. Thanks. The first question uh, regards how and where to mount the solar modules. Like all of, or most of life, it depends, okay? So if your roof is facing south uh, at your degrees in latitude with no shade or anything else, uh, it may be better because uh, a ground mount is closer to the ground, therefore more likely things on the horizon are going to shade it and also how it's mounted. So depending on how it's mounted though, in uh, tropics and subtropics, ground mounts run cooler, okay? So, and there's temperature coefficients in electrical equipment. So the cooler something is, generally the more efficient it is and the better it operates. And that pertains almost directly to uh, solar modules, solar panels as they're generally referred to. And you can refer to some of our videos where we actually demonstrate that and we can show you differences in temperature of solar modules and also differences in performance versus temperature. Uh, the method that it's mounted on the ground would matter also, like if it's in the tropics or close to water or anything else, you'd want a very durable, non-rusting, non-deteriorating form of mounting pillar. Uh, in addition to what are your soil conditions and also livestock and things like this. These are all considerations to take in. Uh, you're going to be also less likely and less availability to monitoring your system if it's ground mounted because you're looking at a further distance to run Cat5 cable uh, and or you'd need to have a separate subscription to a cell account so you could have some kind of a different monitoring system which would run into expenses so yes and no like it depends right and roof mounting is probably the easiest most cost effective your te your uh, cell temperatures may run a little bit hotter not because of radiant energy or solar energy and and the the heat of the roof unless you have those dams basically air dams that's not what they are they're just there for looks but they stop circulation of air creating an oven underneath your solar modules which would cause them to run less efficiently and you'd actually get less performance out of them they look good but not a good idea for solar installation because the whole purpose of a solar installation is to generate energy right so why would you do some extra thing to reduce the amount of energy that you're going to get saying that people do it all the time <laughs> in fact there's a company a large company out there that pushes that to no end and god bless them and you know at least they're generating some electricity so it depends uh the second part of the question was uh is there a way to feed the power directly into the grid and also the distributed energy into your house and then really a third question was or to store the energy so let's go into the first part is a grid connected system traditional installation the most economical and durable and longest lived in the equipment would be a direct grid tied system and those do connect to the electrical system in your house uh, so here's the grid here's a meter the the utility meter to that measures everything that's going from the grid to your house and here's your house distribution. 
your traditional, so here's the meter or the grid. Here's your house distribution with all your breakers in it. Um, traditionally, uh, the installation would be either on this bus bar, the end of this bus bar, if the system's not too large to fit that bus bar or in the connecting conductor between the grid and the bus bar, um, protected by an overcurrent device there as well. Uh, which would feed directly into that line and your consumption would take all of that production during daylight hours. You would consume it if during daylight hours it's producing more and pushing more on this line than the house is uh, consuming, then you'll start to go this way too. So the energy will go like this way. It's a lot like the flow of water, it's all downhill until it's not, right? Except for basically you're on a pendulum on a solar system, right? So during the day, you're producing energy and you're pouring energy and electrons into the grid and also the house. And then the sun starts to go down and it goes this way and then the uh, grid is now fit, feeding everything in the house. And then the third part of the question would be, is it better to store the energy and then redistribute it? No. Um, for the purposes of efficiency and the purposes of it being an economic venture, uh, having a solar system and or to save the planet or whatever your motivation is to get a solar system, um, it is going to be more durable. It is going to be more economically sound to just get a regular system that just puts energy back into that bus bar or the, uh, the line or the grid. And that is gonna be the most efficient means. If you have to have backup power um, for whatever reason uh, and or you're off the grid, then yes, you, you, you're gonna need some storage. There are also some utilities in the country that have a demand charge and uh, have a peak usage and also a demand schedule where they measure peak load at different times of the day and you get this flat charge um, based on that um, whatever that level is and generally those are during daylight hours uh, usually in the morning when people are making their breakfast and coffee and in the evening when people are cooking their dinners and stuff like right before sunset and right before or right after sunrise so having a system that comes on and actually puts a little bit on the line right then is beneficial however it's then you might be wanting to look at uh, having a storage system that simply drops big loads in those time periods and powers those big loads just in those very brief time periods off of a battery. That takes a time study and a monitoring system on your house. You'll have companies go out there and try and pitch you this, but they don't know what that load is until they actually measure it over time. So if you have somebody coming out to your house or you're in one of these areas that has this demand schedule and you have a company coming out there um, that doesn't put any monitoring equipment on your bus bar and on your load circuits before they sell you the system and they make promises to you, they're making a promise they can't keep. They're shooting in the dark. They really don't know what they're doing. It's viable then, and it might be worth the money then, but it's all a matter of numbers, and um, we can sit down and calculate those with you. We're not in any areas right here. There is one... Uh, utility in Florida that's doing something similar to that. We haven't been able to make the numbers work to make it really where we are as far as what we're trying to offer to our customers. We're trying to have the, um, uh, the finance systems be uh, a net positive on the good financing and you know for the duration of the loan and then of course after it's paid off it's all gravy after that and we're hot and our price point we try and keep it where the payoff of the system um, is uh, between eight and ten years okay so uh, and that's taking into account incentives and tax credits and things like that i hope i steered your thought process in the right direction i may have 
given you more questions. <laughs> but um, it all comes down to what most of life is, and it's what if or uh, maybe. But you really need to evaluate your circumstance and the companies that you're uh, soliciting to provide you with a system should be taking into consideration your concerns and should be doing their due diligence as far as finding the right solution for you. Michael Brown, Solaray, hope we answered some questions and or got your thought process going in that old uh, tinker toy in your head turning so that it's, it's going to make a good decision for you. Thank you very much. Have a great day.